Um, I will get started then. Um, I think anyway, it'll probably be quite quick because it's it's a shorter chapter than some of the chapters we've had recently. Um, and also I think probably um, the kind of concepts in there, people are more likely to have like used those in their everyday work, I think. So to me, certainly it felt like it wasn't covering super new ground, but let's see as we go through anyway. Um, and I've also got the exercises at the end, so we'll probably be able to get to them this week without a problem. Um, okay, so this is all, I think, this is all on control flow. Uh, I've included Shakespeare quotes because I'm vaguely Shakespeare uh, themed in this, uh, one of my interests. Um, so as an overview of the chapter, it's basically about control flow, which is all about the flow through your code. So you can have like paths in your code, um, which means that uh, as it runs, you don't have to have literally everything written out because there are kind of options going through the code um, as uh, you run through it. Um, and the primary tools that are covered in this chapter are choices, um, which are things like if statements, if else, switch, those kinds of things where different things will happen depending on what's uh, put into them. Um, and also loops, um, things like for loops in particular and while, um, which are to do with code, the same code pretty much running again and again, um, but often with like uh, a value or some values or elements changing. Um, so perhaps as you go through a vector, you repeat the same code, but with each uh, value of the vector, for example. Um, so focus first on choices. Uh, these are the main if statement style uh, style ones. Uh, if statements, these are um, basically how they're written out in the book because um, I think they're quite, uh, they kind of make sense. Uh, so these are the kind of key ways that you'll see if statements um, or you'll use if statements. You have your if, your bracketed condition, and your condition will always be evaluated to something true or false. Um, and then the action that should get taken if it's true. Um, you can also have uh, an else following your if statement so that you also have what the action should be if the condition evaluates to being false. And you can also write stuff out so that you have kind of uh, if statements linking to each other or kind of nested or, you know, kind of like going on from each other. So you have if this is true, then do this. But if this second thing is true, then do the second thing. Or else if this, you know, if neither of those things are true, then do this third thing. And that you kind of like can see going down a screen and you often have curly braces to kind of um, make it clear what the action part of that is and to kind of um, more neatly run the code. But like you can see in the above ones, those braces aren't required for it to run. Uh, so an example, uh, so that it's more real, uh, you can put this into a function like this. Um, and this function here, you would have an input that's music. And so you have your if statement, and then you have your bracket condition, which here is music, is equivalent to a string, which is the food of love. Uh, you have your true uh, value, um, which is play on, or else, i.e., if the condition evaluates to false, it says that's enough actually. So then you can see how that, if you pass something in which is music, which isn't the food of love, then you just get returned, that's enough actually. Um, so, I mean, that's probably, I imagine, a lot of people um, uh, in this book group will be very familiar with that kind of structure. Uh, so the kind of other things worth knowing about if statements which came up in the book are if seems potentially obvious but you know worth bearing in mind um, that if the condition is false and there is no else statement then you get a null returned um, which might not always be like super obvious that that's what's happening but that means that you avoid errors when the kind of result of an if statement is used. So um, the example given in the book had like, you know, if you use a paste uh, function, for example, and you've got, uh, you're pasting together um, something which always happens and then like something which might sometimes happen, um, 
then if it if the second thing doesn't happen then you're pasting together still an object which is the null the kind of like null return rather than something which is an error or something which is na uh, you know effect something which is missing which means the paste will kind of be like what's going on uh, like I've said, the condition's got to evaluate it's true or false. Um, what that means is that in most cases, if it doesn't evaluate true or false, you're mainly going to get errors returning and it's not going to work. Um, the case that they talked about in the book where that isn't true is if um, the uh, evaluation of the condition comes out to a logical vector, which is bigger than one. Um, so uh, that then generates a warning instead, um, but it still works. So your it will take the first uh, value in the logical vector because um, it can, because it's still that's still logical. So it, it it can still once it's once it's cut it down to one value, it can be like, okay, well that's now true or false. So I can work with that. But the trouble is that's not normally what you would expect because you wouldn't normally there's, there's there wouldn't normally be a reason to be inputting a. Uh, a a vector that's greater than one so probably you've done that as a mistake um, so there's a there's this uh, this line of code is something you can add um, if you want to make sure that you're going to get an error rather than a warning for that specifically um, but other than that I think that's more something to kind of be aware of as something that could happen so the next kind of thing to be aware of is if else uh, as a function um, so the thing about if is we've talked about how the condition has to evaluate to either true or false, that's a single true or false. Um, and so often you might want to be working with vectors and it's not going to be very satisfying to have your if statement only work with one value. So if else is a way of working with vectors. Um, so they have your if else function and then within your kind of function brackets, you then have your condition as your first argument. Then you have your value if the condition is true, and then you have the value if it's false. And so you can then, uh, uh, let's, I've got an example of this. Um, so uh, I've got this in a function again. So here's the key if else bit. Uh, I've got uh, some plays which have two of them. Uh, well, there's King John, King Lear, and the Tempest. Um, say we wanted a function which said whether these plays were about kings. You might not think it's a very good way of saying if plays are about kings, but say we wanted to say that if it includes the word king in the title, it's about a king. Then you could have um, search the string uh, in plays uh, for king, for the word king. And then you can have if it's true, then you'll say this play is about king. And if it's not true, you'll say this play is not about a king. And so you've got your condition. You've got your true, uh, your true kind of value, and you've got your false value, and then that means you can use this. Here, I've got a vector of, of strings um, which I've created called plays, um, and uh, then when you put that in, that will then know that the first two are about kings, and the third one is not about a king. Um, so you've been able to, if you you couldn't do that with an if statement because it's three separate things. So uh, things to note about if else. Uh, are that um, missing values will be passed into the output, which is probably convenient because you don't want to necessarily you want to have your output be as long as your input probably, um, so that your structure stays the same length. So that if you're doing something on something that I guess is a, a list or a column or something like that, it's going to be broadly equivalent. Um, uh, oh, I just saw a chat flashing up. Maybe I should check that occasionally. Okay, no, no worries. Don't worry about being late. It's fine. Um, then, uh, I'll just click back on here. Uh, right, so you, um, with your true output and your false output, i.e. your kind of second and third argument of your if-else statement, you really want those to be the same type, um, because the date, because obviously you're doing this if it's on a kind of vector with several or multiple, um, We've got multiple bits in that vector, then uh, if that's some of them will be true and some of them will be false, if they're therefore varied uh, types, 
then that's going to make it complicated because it's unclear what the kind of output vector is going to be. It has to be presumably the same type, so therefore it's going to have to choose one of those, um, which can be difficult to predict. So generally you want them to be the same type, which I think is often what you're going to want to do anyway. It's going to feel like an obvious thing to do. Um, and then also to flag something that was flagged in the book is that there is dplyr uh, case when, the function case when, um, which uh, I also am adding that data table has in development F case, if anyone's more of a data table user. Um, and so these allow multiple condition vector pairs, which means that uh, you're still working with vectors, so you can still work with lots of, um, lots of kind of input values. Um, but you also uh, can like get around that kind of like nesting thing because if elses are a bit unwieldy to nest because they end up looking quite messy and difficult to interpret, I think that's my kind of feeling about them. So that means that you can have quite clearly your like, if this, then that, if this, then that, if this, then that, like across several different, like it says condition vector pairs, um, which is a nice trick if you're doing lots of that kind of stuff. Um, and the other one they mentioned, I have to say this, this for me was new. I don't think I've really come across switch. I don't know if that's usual or not. Um, I think the reason why I probably haven't come across it is, is because it's kind of like doing uh, like an if statement a little bit more neatly, which maybe I've never really searched for. Um, but so basically it means you can be a bit more succinct um, about if you've got like, particularly when you've got this kind of like multiple values that you want to match to each other. So this is in this kind of format where you've got switch as the function, you've got your input, then you've got your kind of options, um, your kind of various kind of pairs that you might be like, if it's A, then option one, if it's B, then option two, if it's C, then option three. And then you've got your kind of line um, saying, indicating that those are all the options by having a kind of something to happen if none of those options are chosen. Um, so in practice, uh, here's an example where we've got uh, a few plays um, and then whether they're tragedies, comedies or histories. Um, and then you can use that to find out the type of play. Um, something, I mean, this is just kind of stuff that I noticed as I was going through that, that didn't kind of make, like didn't look that obvious to me. But like where you've got like Hamlet here, for example, in the switch function, that is, that is not, like it's not in a string kind of format, like you don't have your quotation marks, but when you put it into, if you've got this as a function or if you want to call this, um, so if I wanted to call it here, if instead of play, I put Hamlet, then Hamlet would need to be a string. So it would need to be in the quotation marks, um, which I think I found a little bit like, oh, I need to get my head around it, but also I just felt like it didn't look that uh, obvious. Um, in terms of switch being a base R version of DeFi case when, I don't think so because I think switch is like a case when version for Mm, is this even true? Basically, it only works, it also doesn't work on vectors, like it's for a single value, like an if statement, um, whereas case when gives you that vectorized uh, approach. Um, so maybe it's a, uh, maybe ca case when is a vectorized version of switch more. I think that's kind of more what it is um, in, in kind of my interpretation of it, I think. But yeah, so this works with you put in just a single, um, I, I, I think it, it errors if you try and put in a vector. Um, switch is different to an if else statement. So in terms of if it being better or better than an if else statement, um, I think it's different because you're just using it with one value. So I think, I mean, I can try and do this. Let me see if I can, uh, I think I've shared my screen, so it should be switching to R as opposed to staying on. Uh, if I do this, and if I have, then do like play type, and then if I had a vector in there where I had like Hamlet, 
Ugh, Henry. Ugh. Ugh. And I did that. Sorry, Megan. Um, hi, if you don't mind. Sorry, yeah. sorry for interjecting. If you don't mind, please zoom your R session. Oh, forward. yeah. That's it. Thank uh, you. I'm on a different computer to normal, so I'm going to have to play around and work out which. Okay, that's not working. Why doesn't that work to zoom in? Go to view. Yeah. Zoom in. Oh, that's what I did. Oh, plus plus. Okay, let me. Oh, God. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. No, 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 I think that was the right thing to do, but, oh, no, I don't want to be in there, I want to be in here. Okay, control, why isn't it doing anything? Oh, I've just put plus in the middle. Control shift plus, try control shift plus. Control shift plus, ooh. Uh, I mean, it, doesn't, it doesn't love it. <laughs> is that slightly okay. bigger? That is bigger. Yeah, but that's better, thank you. Is, it, is that big enough? I can do another one. I'll do, it, I'll do it one more time. <clears throat> okay. I don't know why it's so temperamental about it, but hopefully that's a bit bigger, I think. Thank you. Um, yes, so we can see down here in the console that it has uh, only like, that it's only um, wants it to be a length one. And also if I do, so this is what I was talking about just now, like that. I mean, that does look weird when you put it in like that, but obviously it's not an object because it would expect that to be an object, but here it's like that. Uh, oh, oh, sorry. Hey. Uh, hey, uh, before you continue, I want, I'll think about putting in, I want to be able to see the unknown play. Um, oh, this? Oh, ah, yeah. so I think if I put in like um, uh, Macbeth, mm. then I'll get this error unknown play. So it's the last line is a, is something to return an error rather than something to return a value for unknown stuff. Um, I don't know. Yeah. If there is a way to, there could be a way. I don't know if there's a way to be like, if not, if none of these, then something else, but um, that just returns an error. Yeah. Uh, so the other things to consider uh, with switch. Uh, oh, it says that if the last component should always throw an error or null will be returned invisibly. So maybe, I mean, maybe you're not supposed to do this explicitly. Um, but if I do this, and then, oh, oh, okay, but that's, I put in too many, is that? Yes, okay. Oh, well, we don't need to find play. Okay, right, I'm on it. Yeah, so then nothing's happened. So I guess if I, if I signed that, would that then assign null? Yeah, so then that's now an empty kind of object, I guess. So that might be something that you need sometimes, but um, it seemed to, the book seemed to be very pro throwing an error. Um, maybe because if you don't throw an error and you run it, it kind of looks like nothing's happened if you, if you aren't assigning it to anything. So at least the error tells you that what's happened is that it hasn't matched anything. Um, so maybe that's sometimes what you need it to do. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, then it, then the other thing, another thing is that it's something that works best with character inputs. Um, the book uh, said that numeric stuff is harder to use and has some undesirable behavior when failing. Um, I did play around a little bit trying to look at using numeric stuff and it did not. I think it was a bit confusing sometimes because, you know, if you do like this, is this going to work? Then I think it's kind of reading these in as strings. No, it just... Yeah, it doesn't like that because it thinks this is 
So maybe I should get back to being having my error in there. Um, yeah, it, I try, that that was the same though that I got last time that it said that these were. Um, So this is a, sorry I've been slow about this, one, two, three, it's not going to do anything. If that works, then if I put in, okay, let's put in Hamlet here. That doesn't seem to work, that looks like it's giving me a number. Yeah, it's like a number. But, but apparently don't do it. Um, <laughs> maybe it maybe it is maybe it sometimes does have unexpected behaviour if you fail at it. But certainly it seems weird doing it the other way around. Um, and then this I thought was quite fun, um, how you can have multiple um, multiple kind of things that match multiple conditions for a value, I guess. So um, if you have each one, you can just leave it blank and then it will know that you want it to be assigned the, uh, the value that comes, that next has a value. So here, for example, this is pretty much the same function, but I've added in some extra lines, which are just empty. Um, they just have like their kind of condition. It's not, there's not, there's not like a string there. There's not like an NA there, I'll just put equals and then a comma. Um, and then that then will evaluate down. So both these two will evaluate to a tragedy. So here, if I then run play type Macbeth, then I get tragedy, which is quite nice. I quite like that, personally. Okay, so uh, loops before we go on to the exercises. For loops, while loops for EG. This is an example of a loop. Uh, so this is the book's interpretation for, then you have your brackets, item in vector, perform an action. That's how your for loop could look. Um, and a very simplistic example is that you can have for play as an item in plays, which is a vector that we created a bit earlier, uh, print the play. Um, and then so that happens, that code gets run three times and for each time it will substitute um, the play that is in that kind of position in the vector plays. Um, things to know uh, is that for assigns um, stuff to the current environment, um, which means that if you are if you're if you're if you are assigning stuff in your for loop, uh, then you're going to overwrite existing variables with the same name. It's not like a separate for environment or anything. You just need to be careful with your naming if you are trying to. Uh, keep your existing variables. Um, if you want to terminate a loop early, you can use next, uh, and that will move to the next iteration of the loop. So it will just skip any remaining stuff happening in the loop and go to the next play in this instance or whatever. Or you can use break, and that will just stop the loop. So you're not going to go, if there's anything left in your vector, it's not going to deal with any of those. I'm um, just going to exit the loop. Um, and then stuff around uh, kind of slowness of for loops. Um, one suggestion for kind of avoiding that slowness is that if you're um, outputting stuff, um, having that, uh, that object that you want stuff um, outputted into already ready and pre-allocated so that it's the right dimensions and so on. Um, so that when you're generating data, you can have somewhere that already exists to put it into rather than kind of like creating stuff where there's this kind of question mark over how big it's going to need to be, um, which is what kind of produces this slowness. Uh, and then there was this kind of specific uh, thing that can happen, which can be uh, frustrating or confusing, which is that if you use, um, uh, if you want to iterate over uh, a certain number of iterations, uh, which is the length of your vector, 
then if you use one uh, colon length and then your vector, um, then that can sometimes fail in a weird way because um, your colon for your sequences can relate to decreased sequences as well, which means that it's saying like, oh, go from one to zero, and then it's very weirded out by that possibility. So it suggests using this, uh, no, I don't have sequel, sequ, sec, along, underscore along, uh, vector uh, function um, instead, and that will always return a value that's the same length. Um, and uh, which I, I don't think I've used, so I think that was what you sort of need to find out about. Um, and the other thing uh, that is worth knowing is that as loops uh, happen, they strip attributes. Um, so that's, you know, feeds back into our stuff that we've learned about S3 vectors uh, in particular. So that's going to be stuff like dates and factors and time durations and things like that. So the example in the book, which I've just replicated here, is that you can have a vector of dates, um, and then as you go through this for loop, you just uh, they just get turned into those kind of integer dates, or yes, because that's 2020 and 2010, yeah, integer dates. Um, so what you can do instead is to call the element that you want specifically with your subsetting, um, and then it will print well, so in this instance, print or otherwise engage with what you're trying to do um, uh, by looking, by knowing that it's part of something with multiple attributes, I guess, um, uh, which is just a handy little tip. Okay, and then I think the last things on these are that you have other things that you can do loops with. Um, the kind of other ones that are kind of in the same wheelhouse are while. Um, which uh, is kind of like while, and then you have a condition, and then you have an action, and you can perform that action as long as the condition is true, which means that it's kind of dependent on that condition. So that could happen for a really long time until the condition changes. Um, you've also got repeat action, which literally will just repeat forever. Um, so with those, you really want to have a breakpoint, unless you do genuinely want it to happen forever. Um, so I think the reason why you would generally use for loops instead of those is that for loops are kind of the least flexible of those like um these are ones that are you know have pretty broad kind of uh conditions to keep going i guess so um in, in general that's kind of good practice because you want to use the kind of most specific tool for your um for your use case and also shout out to map and apply um, because uh, they're going to get covered later, apparently, um, and there, you know, a lot of a lot of people will be familiar with those as kind of alternatives to writing for loops. Um, cool, great, cool. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, so on to the exercises. Uh, the first one is more of a, a question than a code exercise, um, which is asking what the difference is between if and if else. If else works with vectors, right? And if only works with single values. Yeah, exactly. I think that's the key, uh, the key difference really. I mean, obviously they're structured slightly differently. Um, but I think the key thing is that if uh, these are the, by the way, these are the questions that were at the start of the chapter. So these are the ones which like, if we know these ones, then we don't need to do the chapter again. Um, so yeah, I think that's it. It's vectors, um, basically versus using scalars. Cool. Uh, so we've got this following code. Um, what will the value be of y if x is true? What if it's false? And what if it's n a? So thinking about true, so if it's like if x is true, uh, three. I'm thinking in error, but I'm not, I'm not sure. Shall we put, let's, I'll copy it into my, uh, here so that I can demonstrate. 
I don't think it returns anything. So why would be null, I guess? If it's true. No, if it is, uh, if it is false. If it's false. Yeah, if it is true, then why is it gonna be, it's gonna be equal to a three? Yeah, I think that is my belief as well. So let's, if it's true. Oh yeah, why is now up here? Right, okay. Uh, so why is, why is indeed three? Uh, make this false. Uh, that is indeed null. My guess for NA is that it's going to be an error because it's false. Um, so therefore it isn't going to have um, a way of interpreting that, but let's Ooh, that might be wrong. It has given an error. Okay, so there we go. So you get basically a true condition, a false condition, which in this case, that isn't a false condition, so it's null. And you have NA, uh, it's not true or false, so therefore it's an error. Um, cool. Next one. So this is a switch function. Uh, where the input is this x, so what is that going to return? Noting the x given here is this kind of blank. Yeah, it should be two. Yeah, yeah, so this will fall through um, it's, it's kind of easier to see, I think, when it's, when it's layered out in that kind of like line by line ladder, but yeah, so it will fall through to the next one. And so the next one is going to be two. Uh, yeah, we'll and I agree. Uh, I think you highlighted this a little bit, like it's, it's still so hard for me to think about this X as a, as a character then the X without the. Quotation. Yeah. Yeah, definitely when I, when the first time I read this after having read the chapter, I still was like, well, what, where are we putting in the, and then I was like, oh, this is where it's putting in. It's just got, it's just got in the string. Yeah. But I think that is exactly right. Okay. So those are the start of, start of the chapter stuff. So we know all those. Okay. So these are uh, the exercises that relate to the kind of choices section. So what type of vector does each of the following calls to uh, if else return? And you've got basically three versions of an if else function where the condition is basically true or false or NA, again, kind of dealing with those kind of true, false, NA stuff. Write down the rules in your own words. Don't use the <laughs> documentation directly, apparently. Um, I'm going to move to the documentation because I think I found where they actually talk about this and then we can see whether we understand it in our own words. Uh, so, 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 I think it might be at the end even. Oh yeah, I think this broadly tells Oh, except this is a, this is different, uh, slightly different stuff. Um, should, 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 it, should it be should we, should we be looking at uh, the input of if 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 or else or if else? Yeah. If. Yeah. So, I mean, if. So I, my belief is that if you have, if else is true, then it would be one. And so then the only input it would have had would have been, this is going to be helpful. Maybe I need to put, what if I put it in? Uh, that, is that going to help me? Okay, so that's a number, great. Um, No. And this, yeah, okay. So I think basically 
oh yeah, I think I remember what was uh, going on. So it's obviously the outputs are, if it's true, then the output is this kind of numeric effect, is this, new, is this number one, and it's the only thing in the vector because it's, you've only got a one, length one vector. And same with, uh, if it's false, then it evaluates to have the value be no as a character string, so therefore the output is a character, because that's the only thing in that vector. But if you have it as NA, then that comes out as a logical one, because it's not, uh, because the first thing it is is a logical test, and so if it doesn't have an answer to that because it's NA, then it doesn't ever convert into any other type of um, output, I believe. Uh, so it doesn't, so it still returns stuff because it's if else, so it doesn't error because if you've got missing values, it will still work. Um, but because it doesn't have, I think because at this stage it doesn't have any indication of what vector it should be beyond having been the true or false question, I think that's why it ends up being logical. I think I think you can see the difference um, in if else in, in base R if else with the multiplier if else, which is if underscore else, uh, where actually it's going to be an error if you try to do an if else with a number on a string. If else, what here? No. Oh, if you do it here. No, no. If instead of if else, you use if underscore else. Oh, this one. Yeah. What does that do? Yeah, it's a, it's a function from the tidyverse. Ah, oh, okay. But, yeah, sorry, but, I I'm very but, but table heavy. It's, it's um, oh yeah. <laughs> to... No, but it's much stricter in terms of uh, the values that you can pass to it. So uh, ah. it simply doesn't know to. I mean, it it it, it throws an error when you're trying to compare a number. And a string. Okay, so so it forces you to have the same. Yes, uh, the same sort of. Uh, same the same type of type stuff. Of okay, that's cool. That makes sense. Yeah, and this is and this is you know the book advises against doing this, so I think that's probably why it's asking you to look at it. But uh, cool. Um, okay, so why does the following code work? It asks. Um, so in this first one, we've got x is uh, assigned to be this sequence of numbers. And in this one, it's assigned to be a kind of numeric vector, but just the kind of placeholder object that doesn't have anything in it. So I'm guessing well, not, I'm not guessing. So the length of this is going to be zero. And zero, if you read that in a logical framework, is going to be false. So the reason that this works is because if this is any number, which it is going to be if it's, if it's got any length, then uh, it's going to be not empty because that will, a number will evaluate as true. Uh, whereas uh, zero is going to evaluate, which is the length of this, I imagine is zero, then that will evaluate as empty. Cool. I think that's... No. I don't know where I don't know where where we read that. I don't know, maybe it was in this book, but we were mentioning that um, any number evaluates to if you turn it to a logical mm. um, evaluates to true. Yeah. Yeah, so I think this can be, it's not like, it doesn't just have to be one and zero, like it can be like, you know, 2050 will still be true uh, rather than an error or anything. Um, but as long as it's zero, so that's quite, it's, you know, clever. Okay, uh, let's go to the next one. So now those are the, those are the choices exercises. So now we've got the loops exercises. Uh, which immediately looks more confusing to me. <laughs> um, so, why does this code succeed without errors or warnings? Uh, again, X is a numeric kind of 
empty uh, numeric vector. Uh, we've created we've created another a vector called out, which is you now us creating something that the output will go into, um, which is a vector, which is a list that is the length of x, and we know the length of x is zero, so out is presumably a vector that is not very it is length zero as well. Um, and then is this is this is the implication here because we know that this is can be dodgy because it goes down or is that not what they're asking about here i guess my question is why would we expect this to have errors or warnings because that's what i'm not totally sure about i can i can run it all that's helpful so that we can look at each bit. Okay, so X is this empty. Yeah, so that's just NA. No, that's not NA because I didn't do it properly. Yeah, there we go. Now it's an empty numeric vector. And we have out, which is going to be this. Also, so that is up here, the list of zero. So for i in one, two, length of x, which is zero, so that's gonna be one to zero, so it's gonna be a decreasing thing. Uh, out i, which will start with one, but that doesn't exist, becomes this, which doesn't exist, to two. Maybe that's why I should have an error, because those things don't exist. Uh, Hold on a second. Uh, first, first, go back a little bit to because we have for one, so out of one is going to be a value. Okay, that's all right. Uh, then uh, x of one, the first element in x should be empty. Yeah, so it does. So, what is out one? Just gives null. What if I do like? Uh, you, you try uh, x, x, x one. Yeah. Okay. X one gives us an na. Okay. I see now. I see. And anything to a, 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 a to the power of two is gonna be an a. Because it propagates the missing values. Mm. So it does that rather than having an error saying that you don't have. A value is just well. I guess the value is NA. Yeah. Rather. I think, I think you. I think you are. You are. You are right. The, 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 the main thing was that uh, to figure what was for, for us to figure out that it's now a decreasing sequence. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's not. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh. Next loop exercise. Uh. When the following code is evaluated, what can you say about the vector being iterated? I feel like this is a very cagey question um, because they don't want to give it away. Um, but so we've got this vector, uh, which is assigned up here. Um, and then we have our for loop where we're trying to, for each of these in the vector, we are uh, assigning uh, the vector and this times two. Um, so I think the key thing they want us to talk about here is that uh, excess is assigned within the for loop and that that doesn't, um, you know, that it doesn't stop, it, it kind of writes over the existing uh, vector, um, which, so basically this would have been the existing excess. And then, so this time, so the first time it goes through, it goes, um, x, which will be one, because that's the first, the first time uh, something's happening. Um, uh, first, one of these in this uh, vector is a one. Um, we so we repeat the vector, and then we have one times two. So that what that means is, is that you then get the vectors concatenated, and you get a two there. 
and then so it's not like you're you're not deleting this stuff because we we put it here but what it does mean is that this could go on indefinitely if yeah. it was it so the implication there is that it um kind of evaluates what xs is at the start of the for loop and it won't like revisit that um which is probably good if you're doing something like this uh, to not have that become a kind of infinite uh situation um yeah i don't know this this kind of code makes me feel like i don't have control of, <laughs> of what i'm creating yeah yes uh yeah I'm sure there's some, there probably are some useful use cases where you can kind of like keep you know, iterating on something, but um, yeah. Okay. Uh, next exercise. What does the following code tell you about when the index is updated? Is that, like, is that what I just answered over here? I don't even know. Um, so this is doing something relatively similar, but by printing it, it tells you stuff which is broad i mean it's broadly what we just discussed i'm not sure this is a totally different uh different idea because the index which is you know here um this gets so you get reassigned here and then you print it so your i is your one times two is two, but it's not like then you've gone to your, mm, well, like then your next one is also two times four. So it's not like your i here is, well, I mean, it makes more sense when you look at it further because then if the i here is four for the second one, then there isn't a fourth one in this uh, vector. So then it would have stopped or it would have failed or something. So it must be doing i being one to three, even though the i is getting reassigned. Yeah, I, I think this is uh, this is more straightforward, mm -hmm. uh, kind of obvious, uh, and I think it's very very beneficial for 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 someone who wants to understand the previous the previous. Yeah, one. by printing it out, it's good, isn't it? Yeah. So everything is uh, before it does. Uh, the, the the task in the, inside the for loop, everything is first evaluated. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. So probably this is why uh, if if you want to update any counters, you cannot really use a for loop. Yeah. Or you have to have a, you have to have a separate thing that's the counter. Yeah. 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 Um, well, that was the last exercise. Uh, so that's quite good timing because it's now 7.30, what, well, 7.29, according to my class, which also is 8.29 for other people. So that's very confusing for you to say what the time is. Um, but I don't know if anyone else has kind of specific questions things I want to talk about. I'll probably have to um, head off pretty soon. Uh, but hopefully, I think that is a clearer or a simpler chapter than some of the ones we've done recently and probably some of the ones we're about to do. So it's quite nice to have one that's a little bit less taxing.